So the Ripple X Alps is the world's wildest adventure race. To do this race, you need to be not only an incredible mountain athlete, you also need to be one of the world's best paraglider pilots. What does it take to win this race? Um, uh, maybe you ask Kriegel. <laughs> So this is the 20th anniversary of the first ever race, which took place in 2003. And for the first time, it had a new start uh, in the ski resort of Kitzbühel. We've got a lineup of 32 athletes. It's always around that kind of number. Um, and uh, with, with four women taking part. And finally, we are here in Kitzbühel now, ready for the start. For me, the eighth time. It's good to have a new start, a new area. I'm very interested and motivated for this. Uh, in the afternoon and tomorrow, I, sh I think we can fly well. And then we're heading to Switzerland. So there is one man who has dominated uh, this race like no other, and that is Christian Kriegelmara, as he's known. Uh, he's won the past seven editions, which is an extraordinary kind of reign of dominance. I can't think of any other sport where one athlete has just so comprehensively dominated for 15 years. And so, the Red Bull X Alps 2023 is underway as athletes from around the world embark on their journey across the Alps. More than 1,200 kilometers, five countries, and 15 turn points lie ahead if they are to make goal in Salomse. So it's telling that as two rookies who were the first to the top of turn point one, um, Lennart Oblak, former biathlete, and Jordi uh, Villalta from Spain, we start here in Tannenkamm, it's a new place, it's, a, it's really nice because hike and fly became the first part more often. And then come in the race, in the flow, it's uh, the tactic of the first days. The route is one massive loop around the Alps. It starts at Kitzbühel, goes east through Austria, north into Germany, then quickly cuts back into Austria before heading west through Switzerland. The athletes navigate some of the country's highest mountains before turning anti-clockwise around Mont Blanc and start heading back east through Switzerland, then into Italy, across the lakes, and back over the Alps one last time to finish at Zellamse. There are 15 turn points. So these are places where athletes have to tag. Um, some of them are on the ground um, and they have a sign board and they've got to sign their name. Others is a virtual cylinder and they can just pass them in the air. From here, the athletes can only make progress by hiking or paragliding and they have to carry their gear and glider every step of the way. And it was Pal Takats who was first to launch. He decided he didn't want to wait around any longer. He was going to fly his own line. Now the real adventure, the tactical game, and the competition starts. From now on, every step, every lift, every decision counts. Normally, this is the only time where you're going to see the whole field of athletes, 32 of them, uh, 28 guys, four women, all kind of launching one after the other into the sky, off to begin this extraordinary odyssey around the Alps. So the race was founded back in 2003 and it had a very simple concept, and that was to journey the length of the Alps from the Austrian mountains all the way to the sea in Monaco by hiking and flying. Well, it was a different world. I remember we were traveling with paper maps. We didn't have smartphones, GPSs. You know, it was, uh, it was different. We had heavy backpacks. My backpack was around 14 kilograms. Now it's 6.5, so the difference is quite big. The thing that kicked it off was a flight across the mountains uh, by Tony Bender. Uh, that inspired uh, Hannes Art. He came up with the idea for the Red Bull X Alps and he took it to Ulrich Grill and together they founded the Red Bull X Alps in 2003. This was the time when the idea of hike and fly was born and Red Bull X Alps has been basically building that trend for the past 20 years and, and creating a completely new sport by itself. 
Toma Kokonea is the only athlete who competed in every race, you know, for the past uh, two decades. Fiecare cursă din 2 în 2 ani mi-o test ca și cum ar fi fost ieri. Trăiesc intens fiecare clipă, fiecare zi. Po pot să spun că am făcut alpii și pe jos fiecare metru și prin aer în cei 20 de ani. Cursa, ediție în ediție, a fost diferită și ca strategie și ca experiență. I'm trying to have fun and this is this is why I go for it again, yeah. It's a seven time. Of course, this is a crazy long time of just doing the same thing, but it's it's so uh, it has so many aspects. It's a game in the in the mountains with nature. I really love it. Kriti Maurer is really really unique. His ability to compete and his decision making overall I think is the best. In 2009 for me it was a big big challenge because I was not ready on walking. I was a good pilot, but 90 kilo and uh, really not fast on the ground. And it was a big adventure because cr um, crossing a, a distance of 600 something kilometers, for me it was not clear how I can manage, but then it was a first step and then a second. And finally we reached the goal. It was amazing. He won his first race and every edition since then. That's seven victories so far. Thank you, let's go again. <laughs> I hope to maybe be able to fly back to close to Tselamze. It's, uh, yeah, it's getting late, but it might be possible because the wind is blowing us that way. Sorry guys, see you there. Ciao. Bye. So normally at the end of day one, you can expect the, the field to have split up a little bit, to have broken up, and this absolutely was not the case. So if you could soar along here and you'd be already quite high, depending on what the clouds are doing and stuff in the morning, you could fly along here, up on that giant lift here. Still at quarter past eight in the evening, you've got half the field who are all absolutely right together, landing within seconds of each other, and that's unheard of. Welcome! <laughs> nice! In general, we had a very nice first day, and now we will have to sleep because, uh, yeah, we have the rest periods from seven hours. Tomorrow it looks uh, also flyable, uh, so this way we walk, uh, continue north, halfway to Markwatstein, we, I think we have a good takeoff. Maxim Pino is one of the few athletes who can challenge Kriegel. In 2019, he came second. In 2021, he was leading for parts of the race, flying wingtip to wingtip alongside uh, Kriegel for much of the race. Then it all went, he yeah, had just a massive disaster and he ended up in fourth. Yeah, good, good, good. It's only eight and uh, we have the first cumulus. So. Yeah, good. So this edition, he's going into the race in a really, really good place. Psychologically, physically, he's in a great place. And the question of this edition is, can he do it? Can he beat Kriegel Maurer? So the truth is, that chaser group is filled with athletes who could take the crown. I mean, take your pick, Pal Takats, Aaron Duragati, Patrick von Kern, or any one of these athletes could take the crown if they, if they don't make any mistakes. So, finally ready. Laying towards Markwatstein. Terms already worked, Maxim is high. Clouds, looks good. Bye bye. The next turn point was at Chiemsee Achental in Germany, and local athlete Markus Anders was determined to get there first, pulling a night pass and hiking through the night. But it was Italy's Arandur Gatti who landed first in Markhatstein. Austria's Simon Oberrauner arrived next, but was first to sign the board.
Ich bin der erste Unterschied. Ja, So after Chiemgau, I can tell the route skirts along southern Germany and the very northern fringes of the Alps to Lermus um, in Austria. And it was a Pal Takats uh, was the first to land. He was coming in like flapping his arms like a bird. It's actually a really advanced technique that only the most experienced uh, pilots can do. <laughs> Pal Takats is an absolute legend in the sport of paragliding, mainly in the acro discipline. He's a three-time world champion. Uh, so it's mostly known for his acro exploits. But he's also done the race two times before, 2009 and 2017, but he's never made gold. Aaron Duogatti and Maxime Pinot came in shortly afterwards. For Aaron, it's his sixth Red Bull X Alps, while it's Maxime's third outing. No one has come closer to challenging Kriegel than the Frenchman. At the beginning, we had very good flying conditions, and what we could observe was that athletes were pushing the, the flying uh, limits very, very high. In just two days, the leading group have traveled more than 300 kilometers. It was so fast that, you know, from the organization, we had trouble just like following with the logistics, with information, with the media and everything. Now we plan to sleep here at the lake because tomorrow we hike up to Closer's Pass up to 2,700 meters. I hope the snow is a bit more hard in the morning so we can climb easily and fly Erexon Switzerland. <laughs> oh yeah. And where? Da kommt gerade wer, huh? Oh, the Max. Cool. Yes! <coughs> Kriegel Mauer is in the lead but there are more than 10 athletes on his heels. It was an incredible day because we started uh, quite far from here and uh, so much crazy move today. And I think uh, this flight to come uh, from Lermos to, uh, to here, it's why not. One, of, one of my best. It was so, so nice, so beautiful. So yeah, good day. Good day. Yeah, really good. It really is an adventure race. To do well in this race, you need to be a really strong mountain athlete, capable and quite happy with running 50 Ks in a day. Uh, running up to 100 K is not uncommon in this race, but it's also the vertical meters. At 5 a.m., the lead pack started their hike to the Kloster Pass to make their first flight of the day. Oh, very welcome, Switzerland. We are here on the Swiss border, seeing uh, Davos and Bertrand Biersch. We hope to fly there today. The weather forecast looks good. Nice one. <laughs> Max, bonjour. Nice to share experience with you. Good. Yeah, nice morning hike in the snow, <laughs> but it was uh, yeah, it was okay because the snow didn't melt yet. So yeah, it was uh, in, we have a nice scenery now. Nice. I'm hurrying to not to lose them this one. from my side because uh, yesterday we were flying together that was working out super nicely and uh, I'm hoping to do the same today but uh, I'm a little bit in a hurry and uh, I'm physically not as fit as these guys oh so uh, I have to be smart in the air Maure, Pinot, Durgadi, and Takets formed the leading group. But the chasers, Tongi Renokut, Damian Lekaz, and Patrick von Kennel are close. Little mistake yesterday, I was not able to 
go with the leading group over this pass, so I'm a bit behind, but it's okay. Nice scenery, and yeah, I hope that we can fly thermal from the pass up there, and then fly as far as possible towards home, towards Frutigen. Austria's Simon Oberrauner and Thomas Friedrich follow closely behind, while Austria's most experienced athlete, Paul Guschelbauer, is back in 13th place and needs to catch up. Meanwhile, the first athletes appear in the sky of Fisch. Maxime Pinot is the first to land at the Swiss turn point. Paul Tuckets follows not far behind. I'm extremely happy to be here already on the third day and uh, having these awesome flights with some of the best pilots in the world. I think I, I've, I have never been having such a cross-country flights. Yeah. The racing is not quite yet on. We are working together as a group and this is uh, extremely exciting and and, uh, and uh, yeah, let's have, for, let's have more. Let's have some more. Rest period starting now. Rest period starting in three, two, one. Signal sent. And now we rest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, job, good job, buddy. Yeah. Nice, buddy. <laughs> I'm sweaty, man. <laughs> on your own, on your own. <laughs> there is a mandatory rest period of seven hours every night. But Mauro had enough of the group trip and pulled a night pass, which athletes can do only once during the race. So the prologue is a one-day hike and fly battle around the mountains of the Kitzbühel um, Alps. And it's just designed really as a, as a teaser before the main race. It's a chance for uh, all the athletes to uh, just flex their muscles and their wings, and also for the fans and spectators, just to get a glimpse of what this sport is all about. And it's a, a one-day race, uh, 60 kilometers around the mountains of Kitzbühel and Kirchberg. The prologue is a good test for athletes, their teams, and organizers to see that everything is in place for the main race. But there is also a prize for an additional night pass for the top three finishers. So athletes went ridiculously hard. They just sprinted nonstop. It was crazy how fast it was. I mean, just the initial sprint to the top of the Hanenkarm and then absolutely nothing in it. I mean, to watch the finish line, you've got five athletes who just came in out of nowhere and just literally falling on top of each other over the finish line. Um, crazy. And, and, and in that mix, you know, you got some of the old guys, you know, you've got veterans like, you know, Kriegel, Max Pinot, Aaron Duragatti, who only a few years ago was told he couldn't walk because his knees were so shot. Uh, and, you know, younger athletes, you know, Tongi, Ben Ogul, and uh, Tobias gross to see those five come in uh, was something else. So there is one curious rule of the Rebel X Alps, and that is on day four, six o'clock in the morning, the athlete in last place gets eliminated and unfortunately, it came for Andre Prochevska. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I have to call you because it's now the first elimination and uh, yeah, at the moment you are at the last position. And thereafter, every 48 hours, the athlete in last place is, is out of the race. So Kriegel did a really interesting thing, pulling his night pass just before Frutigen. He just wanted to be in Frutigen first. This was his hometown and it meant a lot to him. We are here, Frutigen, at home. It's unbelievable, so many people here at this time. and It's always really nice if, if you make a plan and then it works. As Kriegel celebrates with friends and family, 
the chasing group are racing up the mountain to try and find a good place to take off and hopefully catch up. As Tongi Renault Gut closes the gap to the front, Maxime Pinot and Paul Tuckett are in the air, heading quickly towards Frutigen. It was beautiful, but it was windy. You know, I was hiking in a t-shirt and a, a long shirt, and it was not enough. And no gloves until the very top. Oh, it was really, really cold. While Paul is happy to be down, Kriegel is already up again at Nissan. Nice to be at Nirsen, 7.8 down. So, this direction it's Mont Blanc. See there. <laughs> From Nissen, we, yeah, we had super nice condition, but the cloud base was really low on the north face. And I succeeded to jump on the south face in the valley. And I I think I'm one of the only one who did this because the Kriegel yes, was tried going to the Diableret and it didn't work so well. And when I succeeded to jump the other side after I had 3000 meters cloud bases in the south faces. So Mont Blanc is a huge milestone uh, for athletes. Uh, they don't have to land, they can pass it in the air. And when you ram Mont Blanc, you know that psychologically, and also, you know, in the, in the race itself, you are past the halfway mark. It's just the route home from here on. Um, so that's obviously a huge psychological boost to you to get around that big, massive mountain. Now there is a turn point just after uh, Mont Blanc. Athletes have to land um, in the Col de Puddy Saint Bernard uh, and take a selfie by the signboard. Good how are you? Yeah, good. I'm alive, so I'm good. Maxime had to walk the last few meters, but once again, he proves to be the main challenger to the unbeatable Team Swiss One. So Red Bull X Alps is one of those races where men and women compete equally. Uh, women have been competing in the Red Bull X Alps since 2005. In the history of Red Bull X Alps, no woman has ever reached goal. But Eli Edgar from Austria, currently in 23rd place, is poised to change that as she closes in on turn point six, Fisch. Still a long way to go. Um, of course, it makes me proud a bit to be that far. And I think it just shows that girls can compete in this race on the same level as guys do. And I'm really happy that I'm the one who is able to show that. There are still 800 kilometers to go, with eight days left till the race window closes. On the morning of day five, Paul Guschelbauer is back up with the chasing group after a slow start to the race. Paul's performance can be erratic. You know, he's either on fire or he's just having a disaster. I messed up the first day, that was the problem. Yeah, but on the just... first day I made a little mistake and that was... That was not good. But it's now, amazing I had a couple of good flights. Yeah, I'm happy about that. Definitely one to watch. He's a real adventurer. He's also the most podiumed athlete after Kriegel. He's, he's come third four times. So he's always uh, an exciting athlete to watch. And, you know, he's a, he's a real character too. It's been quite challenging. I was with a big group, but I, yeah, I left some of the guys behind. But they're coming, so I better go. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna take off again, and I'll be eating pizza this evening. After a few days, the race does start to take its toll, and you start to see the athletes nurturing little aches and pains and injuries, taping up their legs, 
Well, the blisters start showing themselves too. A roller coaster ride every day. <laughs> so for this race, you need to be absolutely at the top of your game. So Kriegel actually had a bug. I mean, he was, he, you can hear it, he's coughing. And that's also affecting his performance. I had not had a good sleep all these days, and especially yesterday, and this night was really, really bad. I almost not slept. Uh, the last night, the night before I had the night pass, so it was not so bad, but this night was, was horrible. It was just not enough, yeah, not enough uh, to climb up there. So I guess he's just going to to land. He's still in the air, but he's really very low. But um, he needs to pull Plan B. Uh, plan B was to to reland uh, and hike up. But <laughs> never underestimate Kriegel. So he's still very low, but he's still in the air. So hopefully he's gonna grab himself out out of this little valley there. The perfect flying conditions, which they had at the first part of the race, seemed to be gone. However, Maxim has managed to find the right line, even in tough conditions, and passes Kriegel to take the lead. Yeah, it was an unbelievable, like uh, this flight, just. Uh, I didn't expect to arrive so so far today, and uh, it worked. But uh, yeah, we had a really nice condition until uh, uh, le, du, the Montrose du Four Spitz was really good, and uh, and then we we had quite a lot of wind because before we were in the high mountains, so basically not much wind. And after it was uh, it was quite quite windy, but made it out. So Damien Lacaz is, is kind of the athlete you'd never put money on. But in this race, you know, he, he wasn't really, he was just in the mid-pack and then suddenly he just pulls a blinder out the bag. An 11-hour flight. It was an incredible exalt day. Yeah, only 2,000 meters high cup and then one, oh, only one flight of uh, 11, uh, 15, 11 hour and 15 minutes. 266 kilometers, which is a record in this race, all the way from the Col de Puy Saint Bernard across northern Italy. When I overpass the border to to Italy for to enter in Sondrio Valley, I knew uh, that was already a good flight, and the end of the flight was like a dream in, in soaring in north faces with the north, and uh, yeah, all became calm again and uh, I just have to make the better glide as possible until maybe uh, 8 and 55 minutes, uh, 8 o'clock and 55, something like that. Damien was, was in the air for 11 hours, which is, which is crazy enough, but then he tells you that he didn't eat or drink anything either, so he, he didn't even need to pee, he didn't need to come into land, so I think that's probably, he, he was pretty destroyed afterwards and, and you could see it written in his face. Now, the two French athletes lead the race. <coughs> At this point, the race starts to take its toll and everyone struggles with the increasingly tougher conditions. Yeah, the wind is much more strong than uh, yesterday forecast. Uh, we try to uh, walk for one or two hours more on the uh, on the ridge, and uh, we ho uh, we hope the it will be decrease a bit with the sun and the thermals. 
we'll see, but uh, I don't want to walk uh, 80 k's until uh, the turn point. <laughs> so. so at this point, there are about 200 kilometers to go, and it's, it's complicated uh, terrain through big mountains of the Dolomites. Kriegel is just in the lead, but only just. He does not want to rest at this point. He knows that he's got Max Pinot, Damien Lacaz not far behind. And he knows that if he is to secure an, an historic eighth win, he's got to go as hard and as fast as he can. So normally in the Rebel X Alps, by now, Kriegel will have a comfortable lead. What is a comfortable lead for Kriegel? As he said to me, I'm not comfortable unless I've got 100 kilometers. And that, that's just not something he's had or enjoyed at all in this race because the competition is, is just so tight behind him that you can't afford to rest. He doesn't have the luxury that he's had in previous editions. Finally, we got some very, very demanding flying conditions with a lot of north wind and it was really some of the most fearful flights of my life. I think today was probably the most fearful. And this is something you actually expect on the x hubs but so far we didn't have it. And then finally, bam, you know, like some, those days where you would wish you would be on the ground. But anyways, you try to reach the next turn point, so actually it's, it's very uh, yeah, emotionally um, difficult. And you know, we had 12 days for to, to do this course, and this was day six. So if everything goes well tomorrow, I will reach goal, which is in one week, 1,200 plus kilometers. That's quite something, you know. So we saw limits who, which have been pushed very high, and we saw no accidents because only those athletes are pushing so high who really have been able to do so. They have to, to take the right decisions whether they land or continue flying. Since like two hours we were flying in really furious wind like it was 40k per hour at cloud base or more than this. Sometimes then at one point I decided to um, to say okay it's stop it's too much if I go further than this it will be difficult so I decided to I I had some heights, so I wanted to glide and just I succeeded to keep my glider open and just go in, in between the trees and land. So yeah, it was, wasn't so nice. <laughs> So it's easy to think about Kriegel as just being brilliant in the air, this brilliant pilot, but people forget he's also brilliant on the ground. And I don't just mean the physical fitness, it's the planning part. He arrived at Dreisinnen at the car park 10 minutes before the mandatory rest period. Today is uh, looking good with the weather again and sunny and also the, the next steps are interesting with, uh, with the Via Ferrata crossing Patrkovl and then down to Sexton for the signboard and after there is a 80k crossing the main ridge um, I think near Felpertauen I will cross but it's uh, not easy because it's 3000 meter and the wind up there is um, forecasted quite strong so it's another day with adventure. <laughs> that morning he started off and he said to all the assembled uh, fat spectators, are you ready to run? And together, you know, with, with filmers and, and other media, you know, he, he ran up this mountain. In the evening I had better weather than the others and I could fly more in. And this gives me the possibility to make the Via Ferrata and the glide down to Sexton this morning. Really cool place up there that drives in and also known as um, Trichime. And then at the climbing section is a, is a Via Ferrata where you clip onto these kind of iron, you know, these steel cable ways. He turned to me and he said, 
now let the adventure begin. And he just disappeared. I tried to keep up with him and it's just gone. And he, I'm literally crawling on my hands and knees, completely out of breath and Kriegel is just marching. He is, he is on a hurry. He is a man on a mission. He knows that he can't take his eighth win for granted. Max Pinot and Damien Lacaz are less than 50 kilometers away from him. He has to keep pushing and pushing. So he got to the, the summit, he did the obligatory uh, selfie picture, and then he was out of there. And he, he basically just ran off this mountain. Hey Patrick, let's make one together. As the chasing field with Patrick von Kennel, Damien Lecaz, Paul Tackett, and Maxime Pinot arrive at the Dreizenen selfie turn point, Mauro touches down in Sexton. With only 80 kilometers left to go, Kriegel finally has a comfortable lead. Every day we had an efficient flight, on an average 200 kilometer a day. And this makes it possible that we can cover 1,223 kilometers in seven days. So when Kriegel reached Schmittenhoer, it is the final turn point before the finish. Finally, he can relax. He knows the win is his. And it's, it's another historic win for Kriegel the Eagle. Last sign board. It's his It's amazing it's for the eighth time, but for me, it's uh, every edition was special because yeah, it's, it's slightly different. And arriving at Schmittenhoe and to know that I win the race for the eighth time, it was uh, nice. But arriving here with so many people in Salamse, landing on the raft, it's, it's unbelievable. It's a So now the race was really on for the battle for second and third place. And in that mix, it's, it could have gone to anyone. You've got Damien Lacaz, Maxime Pinot, uh, Pal Takats, uh, also uh, Patrick Von Kennel and um, Simon Obran are not far behind as well. And really, it could have gone to any one of those athletes. Damien Lacaz, he pulled uh, an amazing move. He managed to get into position on top of the, the high alpine ridge at 15 minutes to nine. Now, at nine o'clock, you cannot fly anymore. Ah, I'm exhausted, but so happy because I land just before the deadline, three minutes before, and uh, the other cannot glide because they are behind, so the second pass is almost done, almost because there is still 35 k's to walk tonight. Everyone pulls their night pass, but it's still a long walk ahead of them. Be interesting. We will see how it goes in the night because uh, you never know. Max is much faster on the ground. He just hikes. Uh, he's got a much faster pace. So Damian couldn't take any chances. He hiked all the way through the night up to the top of Schmittenhoe, a three hour hike. It's a great, great uh, experience. It was, it was not a, a goal for me to, to make podium, it was, it was not a dream too, it, it was too big. I come here only for the adventure, so I'm really, really happy with that. A bit tired now for, for enjoy it. It was really wonderful to see Maxim Pino make the podium into third place. 
He had a lot of ups and downs in this race. Yeah, it's a joy and a good relief because uh, it was a tough race and I'm happy to to be to be here finally after seven days of racing. Crazy racing with uh, an incredible pace on this race. So yeah, I, I'm happy to be resting a bit more now. So Paul Takats may have come fourth, Hello. but you know it was like he won the race. <laughs> if you if you were looking at him, I mean, yeah, you know the emotion yeah. that, that, that came Gideon. out. I think he really stole the show. He was the, the kind of the athlete of this year's race. He's definitely you know, the fans' favourite, and it's just his style, his character, his just sheer love. This is a dream come true because I, this is my third X ups and I never reach goal. It was really magical to, to see so many athletes making goal uh, this edition. Wow, what a journey, what a journey. Long one. Long one, huh? But you made it then. So Ellie becoming the first female to make goal in Red Bull X Alps absolutely demonstrates that women can do really well in this sport and in this race. All coming together right now, I'm just, the last half an hour I was just crying. <laughs> but it's, it's still unbelievable for me to be here. One minute! Oh! How many is it? Okay. Oh! <laughs> After 12 days and a record breaking number of finishers, the race is over. So, this edition will absolutely go down in the record books. More athletes than ever, 23 making goal, first female to make goal. Uh, Kriegel, his eighth consecutive win, but uh, above all, I mean, what an epic adventure. There are countless, countless moments of, of uh, beauty. So yeah, I think I will still need some days to really realize what was going on here. We never had so many athletes in goal. They will go home with a with an experience that an athlete or someone will very seldom be have. And this is really, really amazing. So 2023, it's been a great race. It was a record-breaking race in, in, many, in many ways.